Hey, it's Danny here from the Whiteboard Blog, and in this video, I want to take a look at another alternative to ChatGPT, which is Microsoft Copilot. There's a couple of ways to get access to Microsoft Copilot. If you're a Windows user, Windows 11, then if you look down in the bottom right corner of your screen, you'll see a little icon here, which is a quick way to get into the preview version of Copilot. If you click that, it'll open Copilot up in a little tab on the right hand side of your screen, and you can chat in that window just there. Alternatively, you can go to the Copilot website, so just go to copilot.microsoft.com. Now, both versions of Copilot, if you use it in this way, are free. There is now Copilot Pro, which has just launched, which will give you access to Copilot within Microsoft Office apps. I haven't got that just yet. I'm still using the free version. I'm going to try and get hold of it, and I'll do a video which explains what that does another time. If you're looking to explore AI, obviously there's the free version of ChatGPT, which gives you ChatGPT 3.5, but actually Copilot gives you access to GPT-4, which is well worth having a play with as an alternative. So let's take a look. I'm in the Copilot website, and the first thing you'll see is down the bottom here, you can choose a conversation style. That's quite interesting. Copilot has three conversation styles. Uh, you can choose creative, you can choose balanced, or you can choose precise. So if you go into creative mode, that's good for discussions, uh, generating content, generating articles, brainstorming with it, getting a lot of creative ideas. If we go into balance mode, that's a balance between the two. So that might be good for lesson planning. It might be good for activity um, creation, um, producing resources for teaching. It might be good for producing assessments related to a learning objective and so on. Then we can go to precise mode. And precise mode is a lot more concise and straightforward. It's a very technical approach so you can ask it specific questions and get brief factual responses. I'm just going to choose um, the balance mode for the minute but all the modes work in the same way. As hopefully some of you have played with ChatGPT now will know, you can just click in the box down the bottom here and you type in your prompt. What is it you want it to do? Now you could just type in a very simple thing, you can get quite advanced in terms of prompts and if you go to my blog, uh, I've got a blog post about how to create really good prompts to get it to do particular things that you want it to do, explain the role you want it to have, um, explain the objectives, explain the parameters. So I could type in here, um, so let's just produce a table there. So there's my questions, it's generated for me, there's the options, there's a correct answer. Because I've asked it to output as a table, I can click on here and I can edit that in Excel. Obviously then if you want to do more of this, I can just type in here and I can adapt and change and ask it for more and, and so on. Now if you don't have a conversation with Copilot, you want to just put in a prompt and get an answer. And maybe you don't quite exactly know what prompt will work. You want to work on your prompt and tweak it a little bit. Then you can go into notebook mode. Now here's a quick prompt already. So there's my basic prompt and there's the output. It hasn't quite got the output I want. I want it as a table. I want everything separate. So what I can do is I can just keep modifying this prompt and hitting the arrow and submit it every single time it'll tweak the output in this screen here in this pane here but it won't get me into some kind of discussion I won't get into a chat with it i'm just putting in a prompt getting a response changing the prompt getting a different response so if i just put in here a different prompt then hit submit it'll have another think about it and it will create the content there and if it's not quite what i want i can change the prompt again this is quite nice if you're just beginning at learning prompt engineering, I want to work out exactly how you get the best prompt. You can just stay in this screen, modify the prompt, and see how that affects the output. Previous chats you've had with Copilot will appear down the right hand side. I'm hitting an issue with Firefox, and I don't seem to be able to call back previous styles. Apparently that's a bug, and it's been known for a few months, hasn't been fixed yet. Um, apparently it works fine in things like Bing, if you're going to use Bing. There are some other features of Copilot which are really useful. They've now split off the image creation into a separate little button over here for designer. So if I want to use Copilot to create images, then I will click on the designer tab and I can now ask it to create me a picture. Again, you can go as detailed as you want with the prompt. I'm just going to do a quick one for now, but you get the idea. I'll fire that off. And then what it's doing is using the DALI 3 generator to create these images, which is quite a powerful one. If I like a particular one of these images, I can click to make it big. I can click on the image here and, and modify it and change it for the particular styles. I want to make sure that it's slightly different. I can click on particular parts of the image to change them. If I want to modify the shape, because I often want banners for blogs, so I want widescreen. So I can click on that little icon in the corner there. I can tell it to be a landscape image and it'll stretch the image out and make it landscape for me if that's the one I like. So if you've got an image in designer that you'd like to do more with, that you've created in Copilot and want to actually use elsewhere, a couple of things you can do. One is you can click on those three dots and you can click on download. It'll download the file as a PNG file. You can save that wherever you want it to go. But also if you want to do some more with it, you can click on those three dots and click on edit in designer. When you click on edit in designer, it'll open up the Microsoft designer app 
could let you take that image and you can edit the image, crop it, blur it, do various things to it that you might want to do in a, in a graphics package, but also you can put that image into various templates. If you wanted to use it as part of a social media graphic or whatever, uh, the templates are all here. You also have some other tools which are less useful for teachers, but they're here if you want them. Uh, there's a vacation planner, there's a cooking assistant, and there's a fitness trainer. So they're useful. Again, if you're interested in that, you can chat to it and have it create your fitness plan and so on. So that's Microsoft Copilot quickly. I've started using a mix of different tools. So depending on the job I want to do, I tend to see what Gemini will do, what ChatGPT will do, and what Copilot will do. Uh, there's Claude 3 has just been launched as well. So there's a couple of quite powerful tools out there at the moment, which are all quite useful for educators to create lesson resources, to create questions, to get brainstorms, get ideas of, of um, things that you can teach with and so on. Copilot.microsoft.com, totally free. Um, and it'll generate images for you. It'll generate text-based content for you and you've got these other little plugins that might be useful as well. Thanks very much for your time. I'll be back with some more videos soon. Cheers. Goodbye.